Hi, I'm DJ Ware, and this is the Cyber Gizmo. Today we're going to be talking about FreeBSD. This is the latest release, which just came out today. It's 14.1. That usually is uh, a fo follow-on enhancement release to the one I covered, I think it's been a almost a year now, uh, which was FreeBSD 14.0. So this is a refresh of, of that. But what, what is FreeBSD even good for? Well, it's good for servers and workstations. You'll find it in, in use in embedded systems. You'll find it in network firewalls. PFSense, for example, uses it. And also in storage servers, like, for example, TrueNAS has a version that is built on top of FreeBSD. They also have one called TrueNAS Scale, which is built on Linux. FreeBSD is a, a software uh, operating system that's based on a permissive license called the FreeBSD license. So during the, during the fiasco of the 90s when everybody was suing everybody, and FreeBSD was sued too, once they got out of that, once they won their lawsuit or got it to be dropped, I don't remember which one it was, but they were really concerned about the license. And so finally they just said, look, let's just open it up. We don't, we don't, we aren't trying to make money off of this. This is just a, uh, we're trying to preserve something going forward, which is the BSD uh, look and feel. Now their code base has nothing to do with the old BSD or the old System 5 uh, uh, Unix. They are BSD in name only. FreeBSD is similar uh, to Linux as well, but it's definitely not Linux. Uh, Linux kind of went its own way. It has its, I'm not sure if there's a philosophy in Linux or not, but FreeBSD follows the, the uh, Unix philosophy. Uh, I've done a video on that. If you're interested, you can see that here. FreeBSD, unlike Linux, is a complete system. It, it includes the kernel, the drivers, the, uh, all of the user land utilities and documentation. Linux, you have to go to a distribution in order to get all that because the term Linux itself is just the kernel. Uh, that's why people say GNU Linux, because then it starts to bring in some of the user land utilities, but not all. It's only the things that support the compiler and some of the base operating system commands, like copy and echo and all that stuff. So, yeah, whereas when there's a release of FreeBSD, it's all done together. Uh, there is not a, a, a distribution that has to go out and assemble everything under a package manager and then uh, bring out a new release for you. Uh, FreeBSD 14.1 supports uh, is supported until January the 31st at 2026. Now, what I mean by that is it'll be at least until January the 31st, 2026. Sometimes FreeBSD extends, it just depends on where they are in their development schedule, if they're confident they can release a replacement uh, version in time to meet uh, their own deadlines. They have, they have moved that deadline on occasion, not very often, but it does happen. Previous release, 14.0, is supported until September the 30th, 2024. One of the uh, one of the new features in 14.1 is that the add user command, which is a mechanism that you can add users onto the system, if you're using a ZFS file system, uh, it will automatically create the data set for that user's home directory uh, in the ZFS pool. So, uh, yeah, that really makes it kind of nice. It didn't do that before. You had to go do that yourself. Otherwise, it would have just created it as a directory. But that makes it kind of nice because if it's as its own data set, then you can apply different rules to that user's, uh, that user's area on your, your file system, like encryption and uh, uh, compression. Maybe you have quotas that the administrators want to put on user home directories. You can do all of that. Date on on the uh, on FreeBSD now includes nanosecond resolution, 
And and that's really a good thing because as these systems get faster, the the amount of differences between their execution sometimes boils down to nanoseconds difference between them. And so you need that kind of a resolution in a timer to be pre- absolutely precise when you're you're working on a series of events or working off of a series of events, then you want specific information about when that event occurred. Another one is D-Trace. D-Trace is used to track what the, your application is doing whenever it makes sys requests of the kernel. Uh, sys requests is how it, it calls the API to open files and all that kind of stuff. But now the output of D-Trace can be defined to be uh, either JSON or XML or even HTML. That allows you to uh, pass the uh, data out of D-Trace into applications downstream, which can take action on what it finds. So, yeah, which is kind of nice. Or you can just have it in a nice, pretty outfit that makes it uh, 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 a nice, uh, pretty output, which makes it a lot easier for you to, to read through what it's trying to tell you. Uh, the USB config has added the uh, the vendor name and the product ID or the product information when that information is available. So, yeah, that helps you further identify which device it actually is that might be giving you trouble. FreeBSD is, uh, has security uh, fixes in it and 14.1. You might want to refer to any time that FreeBSD puts out a new distribution or a, a new release of their operating system, they create two files. One is release notes, which contains a list of the changes, uh, and then the errata, which contains the list of the fixes, uh, or it can also contain bugs that are still open. Uh, a lot of times between when they uh, do their wrap up on the final testing, there'll be bugs that they find that they don't feel like there are showstoppers, but they'll go ahead and document them in the errata. So you can look through there to see if, do I really want to put this on now or do I want to wait and see if this gets fixed? Uh, open uh, Open SSH, which is, a by the way, that's a package that's done by the OpenBSD folks. That's been updated to version 9.7p1. There's uh, what a package of awk, they call it one true awk on uh, BSD, uh, because in functionality, it very closely mimics what Unix used to do. That has been updated to the second edition with a new CSV support and also has UTF-8 support in it now. Clang and LLVM has been upgraded to 18.1.5. The uh, OpenZFS uh, version has been updated to 2.2.4. It was 2.2 on the old version 14.0. So yeah, there's a few patches in here. Kernel now allows for building uh, a kernel that contains full IPv6 support. Before, they just supported IPv6 routing, but that's not true anymore. Uh, You can, if you wish, turn on that functionality in the kernel. It's not on by default. It might be someday it will be, but it's not on by default. So what are the requirements to run FreeBSD 14.1? Well, <clears throat> if you have a, a, a x86 that's 64-bit or 32-bit, uh, you can install it. If you have a PowerPC, uh, either PowerPC 64 or 64LE, it'll work. There's a number of ARM versions, including one for a Raspberry Pi that'll run. Uh, and then RISC version 64, I don't, you know, I've said this before, I don't know what version of a, of a RISC platform that is, but it's none of the ones that I'm familiar with. Uh, I think it, it was. it's just for testing. It's, yeah, it's just an emulation at this point. As far as uh, disk requirements for 14.1, these are mine. These are not official. Uh, one gig if you're just doing a CLI install. Uh, mine, when I installed GNOME, it was uh, 4.2 gigabytes uh, that it was taking up on disk. So you'll want to make your plans accordingly. I, I, would, I would usually go two and a half times larger than that, than those. 
in order to give you enough room to do anything. And you, it, but again, you know, it depends on what you're doing, right? You have to assess your own needs. Uh, but yeah, as a starting point, that's what I would do. Uh, memory requirements, one to two gig uh, if you're doing GNOME. Uh, I, I did not look, but usually it's around 425 meg, 425 meg or so. Could be less uh, if you if you turn off a bunch of services. It could be even a lot less. Uh, the CPUs uh, one to two on a CLI, two to four on a desktop environment. But again, you may need more if you're uh, if you're doing AI. Oh, I said AI. I shouldn't have said. It. I got it. now. You have to drink. Sorry about that. Uh, as far as the spinoffs, there's been quite a few. Uh, of course, Apple Darwin is uh, a spinoff, actually, of uh, FreeBSD. That includes macOS, iOS, tvOS. Uh, I think it's, uh, I mean, from my closing thoughts about this is, I mean, they've got some really cool uh, ideas that they put into 14.1. Uh, but, you know, if you're expecting a big change from, uh, you know, 14.0, you won't see it. A lot of this has to do with bug fixes, security fixes, adding additional features that they they felt like they needed to get in. The big changes always come with the point zero releases, and the uh, the dot ones and dot twos are usually well. We need to fix some things, and we need to add some additional features. Now, bug fixes come out whenever they're needed on FreeBSD. So, yeah, don't worry about that. All in all, I think it's pretty solid. Uh, I have run into some really kind of squirrely behavior, especially on VMs. It seems to, it still seems to get confused um, with things like the size of the screen and uh, being able to uh, reduce it. In one instance, uh, I had... The it had gone to sleep. The uh, it had completely powered itself off, and then I woke it up and tried to go back into it and couldn't get the keyboard and the mouse to respond. After some time, it, maybe three or four minutes, it it started working again all by itself, and it was like that's a little excessive. So I think there's still some issues that need to get ironed out in. Uh, and FreeBSD. Uh, I'm going to try to do, put it on hardware uh, because I do use FreeBSD here uh, for my PF Sense firewall, although they control what version you're running on. But I would guess that sometime before September, they'll be upgrading to 14.1 uh, as well. That's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please share it with uh, other folks. It's how we get the video out to other people that might be interested in watching it. Hope to see you in the next video and uh, bye for now.